Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India start this lecture with a thought process from Jim Eden from Seafield University. He says that you are a big chemical reaction, everything you say, all that you do, all that you see, decide or remember, think or feel is nothing, but the manifestation of the chemical reaction that is you. It is a very profound statement and I told you nature uh, does a lot of activities through us with the help of chemistry. That is the beauty of this and let us recall briefly what we had learned in the last lecture. We basically discussed about Hayes law and then we moved uh, to how to find out adiabatic temperature. Then the adiabatic temperature uh, we found out that it is function of equivalence ratio, it is a function of inlet temperature, it is a function of also the pressure. And keep in mind that what I had uh, derived in the class, last class, that is mean for constant pressure process. However, some of the process occurs in the constant volume process, you need to think how we will have to find out adiabatic temperature for that. And remember that I uh, did those things keeping that, uh, you know, um, this chemical composition being known. But however, in real situation chemical composition is not being known and if both are interlinked. And then we moved into equilibrium, because from at equilibrium we can find out, we learned that the by minimization of the Gibbs free energy we can find out the equilibrium <coughs> composition right and keep again i must uh, draw your attention that this minimization of gibbs free energy can be applied only for the control volume process at what you call um, uh, uh, or the constant pressure process right and if i want to go for a constant volume heat addition like in a combustion bomb or a for use for calorie um, uh, use as a calorie meter or for a IC engine then I need to use the Helmer's Grieve free energy, Helmer's free energy. That means, we need to minimize that you will have to look at it, I won't be covering, I will be concentrating on the minimization of Gibbs free energy. Let us look at how we will be dealing with it. And uh, as I tell you, we will have to basically look at the procedure for determining the equilibrium compositions. And I have just identified few steps, of course, first of all, uh, you know, one has to look at what reaction it is. When you talk about reaction, you will have to identify probable equilibrium species. You may ask a question, how I will know that? Of course, you need to have some experience. And even if you choose something, you know, uh, just by guessing, then you can figure it out at the end of this calculation whether it is of worth doing that or not. Because the composition, if it is very very less, you know, as compared to the major component, you can say I can neglect it. But you have to pay price for that because number of equations will be increasing. Then you need to uh, what you call identify the equilibrium reaction scheme that is also is the important aspect what are they learn and then these reactions must be elementary in nature that is a very important point then you need to find out equilibrium constant what is that equilibrium constant some of you might be aware because it is being taught in the you know your um, engineering and other things so we need to determine that equilibrium constant right and then of course, for that we will have to uh, for you know uh, next step would be strike a balance for elementary conservation, strike overall mass conservation and then minimization of Gibbs free energy right. 
and solve all equation you know by iterative method, because all are coupled equations. So, you cannot really solve like that, although it is algebraic, but it will be uh, you know a couple. So, you need to use the iterative method. One of the numerical tool which is being used is the Newton Raphson method for solving. So, uh, we will as I told we will be considering ideal gas mixture all the time. So, Gibbs function for I s spaces can be written as the G i t. That means, this is the I s spaces gives free energy at particular temperature and this is at standard state you know like temperature and pressure and then plus r u t l n p i by p naught you keep in mind that p i is basically partial pressure of the i at spacage and t is the temperature r u is the universal gas constant right that means this is this expression is meant for a particular species it can be methane, it can be propane, it can be oxygen, it can be OH, any other things. So, what it indicates it depends on temperature, it depends on also partial pressure and P naught is your what you call the standard pressure, in this case ambient pressure which is being considered. So, gives function for an ideal gas mixture, we know that uh, G mixture will be summation of N i G i r and N i into G i t r u, you can just write down this expression over here, you know if you look at this expression can be put it over here that is all, or rather it, this expression can be put it here and you will get this thing. So, uh, what we will do now, we will have to basically find out D G capital G of mixture is 0, right at equilibrium, because at equilibrium this will be 0. So, then what I will do, I will just differentiate this expression and d n i keeping this as a constant, this I will be keeping as a constant. So, I will get d n i g i in the bracket you know naught plus r u t l n p i by p naught. Okay. And similarly, n i will keep it constant, I will be differentiating this uh, what you call Gibbs function, because this is Gibbs function right and I am differentiating it. What I will get? If I differentiate d g i t, what will happen? It will be constant. So, therefore, that this term will be 0. right? Similarly, because if I look at basically you know it will be d g i t 0 is 0, because it is not changing with respect to it is with respect to what I mean like whatever the temperature, standard temperature kind of things you know it will be having or sorry it will be at with a certain temperature. So, it would not be really changing. So, that will be 0 and we will find that this d l n p i by p is basically d p i by p in if I take a summation of that partial pressure you know it is equal to the equal to when you take over partial summation of all partial pressure over the all you know uh, of each individual species, then what you will get? You will get the total pressure. So, that will also be not will be changing right. So, if I take a summation of that you know summation, because since the pressure is remains constant in this you know you can have a 0. So, therefore, this term will be 0. So, what you will get the d g mixture is nothing but d n i into this gives you know function for a i s spacage. So, this is a very important you know expression you should keep in mind which is being used for finding out you know composition. Keep in mind that these values you know these values from where I will get, I will get from Janov table and in my book uh, fundamental combustion it is given on the backs of type these data and of course partial pressure and this is the total pressure from which we will be getting basically the mole fraction that i'll see uh, you know in the next slide or we'll discuss about it so uh, let us consider a arbitrary reaction that a moles of species a is reacting with b moles of species b and it is going to the c moles of uh, species C and D moles of species D. It can be n, any numbers, but I have considered only 
two reactants and two product just for simplicity. And what are these A, B, C? If you look at A, B, C and D are corresponding stoichiometric coefficients. That means, you know how many moles it is participating that is saying. And change in number of moles of E species, for example, species A will be proportional to the coefficient of that species A. In that case, D n A is equal to minus k A. k is what? k is your proportionality constant. And why it is minus? Because the reactant is getting consumed, therefore, it is minus. Similarly, D n B is equal to minus k B and whereas, the D n C is equal to k C. Keep in mind, this is positive, because it is being produced. Similarly, D n D is equal to k D and k is the basically proportionality constant. right? What we will do now? We will substitute this above relation it gives function, what we have derived. At equilibrium, this D G mixture will be equal to 0 and we will be substituting here, you know all those expression and sum it over. For example, if I take for A, you know A and B, it will be minus A and keep in mind that there is a K here, because A K, this portion I am taking from here and putting it here and G A naught T plus R U T L N P A by P naught, because the species is A. Similarly, minus there will be K here and G B T naught plus R U T L N P V by P naught, just you write. And then similarly, I can write down for species C and species D, is that clear, which is equal to 0, right. Because this is nothing but what, this is basically G mixture, right. D G mixture is equal to 0 at equilibrium, you keep in mind and we will be knowing the temperature also, we will be knowing the pressure, right. So, and then, if I will do, what I will do now, I will basically rearrange these equations. What I will do, I will put this, you know, G C T uh, kind of corresponding to the standard state, like C and D for and then this thing. If you look at this portion is basically delta G naught, that is corresponding to the, what do you call, standard state and temperature. And these, you can get from Janov table. Right. That means, delta G naught is known to you and then minus R u T L n is equal to P C by P naught and P D by P naught divided by P A by P naught P V by A. And this we call it as basically this term, you know this bracket term, we call it as a K P. What is this K P? K P is the equilibrium constant, right. And this equilibrium constant you know I can write down K P is basically E power to the minus delta G naught R U T right into this portion that is K P. That means, this is known if you look at this portion is nothing but that and then this is known. Am I right? Similarly, I must be knowing the temperature at which I am finding out the equilibrium that means, in the real situation it will be adiabatic temperature, you know. So, T will be known and of course, the R u is known. So, you know this term that means, you know basically K p value okay. and then you will have to find out this basically P naught is known to you or not, P naught is known, but do you know P d, P c, P a, P b? You really do not know that, right you do not know those things, right. Can we express this partial pressure of spaces like P C, P D and then P A, P B in terms of mole fractions, right. Let us the power to the C plus D minus A minus B. But if this pressure, this pressure is what? This is the pressure at which you are trying to find out equilibrium composition. If this happens to be atmospheric pressure or standard pressure, this term will be P by P naught will be 1. Okay. That means, this term 
will be basically one, you need not to worry about, but however, sometimes we will be looking at, at a higher pressure or a lower pressure than P naught. So, this you know for the generality I have kept, but in some book you may find it is not there. Okay. So, now take a, I will take an example and illustrate how we can you know determine this not equilibrium compositions and also I will tell you the steps how you can find out both equilibrium composition and adiabatic temperature, right? That I love to show you. And then, of course, uh, this you cannot do in, you know, in your uh, day-to-day life or in your as a part of curriculum. So we will be taking a simple example where which can be done in classroom. Okay. So let us look at three moles of hydrogen are reacted with one mole of oxygen at ambient temperature and pressure, right. We need to determine the equilibrium product. So, what is given? Given is that initial mixture ratio is given. That means, three moles of hydrogen is reacting with one mole of oxygen. I know that. And pressure is given, temperature is given. So, what I will have to do? I will have to first assume the certain reaction. For example, I can write down 3 moles of hydrogen 3 s 2 plus you know is reacting with 1 moles of oxygen that means O 2. What are the product I can think of? Can I guess? It will be definitely water will be oxygen will be definitely will be there right. May be there may not be there right and O will be there O H will be there right and several other things, but we will consider few of them like hydrogen, oxygen, water, H, O and O H and several other spaces one can think of. Keep in mind that more spaces I take, more it will be number of equations I need to consider. So, that means, these I have guess you know this spaces is being you know guess. So, then I need to identify the possible elementary reactions. Keep in mind, we need to always consider elementary reaction and that is hydrogen you know can be converted into 2 H. When I talk about it, I can determine what is K p. So, K p by definition it will be P s square divided by P s square. If I talk in terms of mole fraction, it will be Y s square P naught divided by Y H 2. Why it is? Because 1 P naught is cancel it out. Are you getting a point? Because in this case, the P naught is being cancelled out in the denominator, right. So, similarly, this is our equation 1, and I will take oxygen is going to 2 O, O 2 is going to 2 O, then similarly, I can you know get a relationship for equilibrium constant that is K P 2 P O 2 divided by P O 2, right. P O is equal to basically Y O 2. 2 square you know mole fraction in P naught divided by Y O 2 right. Similarly, I will be considering H plus O going to the O H right and I can write down K P 3 will be P O H divided by P O and P H. You keep in mind that these are all mole fraction Y O H divided by Y O Y H and P naught comes in the denominator right. And then I will have to look at S 2 plus O S 2 O and K P 4 P S 2 O divided by P S 2 P O and you will get the in terms of mole fraction. That means, I am getting these four equations. If you look at we need to find out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right, but we are only considering the four equations here or we are getting four equation because as you are considering four elementary reactions right. Keep in mind that I can I may take not take this combination, but I may take some other combination as well. Then we need actually uh, maybe it will be clear a little later on that why we need four why not six. Okay. As I told you previously in the procedure we need to talk about elemental balance right and those things are important as well, otherwise you will be in deep trouble right. So, we will be getting two equation from that, let us see what we will get. Let us say that 3 S 2 O 
is reacting with oxygen going to A of water, B moles of hydrogen, C moles of oxygen, D moles of H, E moles of OH. Just for the simplicity I have written. So, if you look at number of H is equal to what? 6 given, yes or no? 3 S 2, that means 6 and number of O atom is basically 2. So, if I take this H, what I can write down? 2 N S 2, because 2 are there in S 2. So, similarly, in the water 2 N S 2 O plus H, it is only 1. So, N H plus N O H is equal to N H, that is the product what I should get. You know, if I look at the product balance, all the things I am talking about in the product, wherever it is there. If you look at hydrogen, water, H, O H. Similarly, I will be looking at oxygen. If you look at 2 N O 2, N S 2 O is there, N O, N O H and N. That means, these numbers you know reactant and the product should match. So, what I will do? I will just divide this by the total number of you know elements whatever is there. So, if I divide this equation for H, right, I will get you know 2 y h plus 2 y water and plus y h plus y o h is n h by n total. And similarly, when I divide this by n total, n total right total. So, I will get 2 y o 2 plus y o s 2 o plus y o plus y o h n o divided by. Now, what I will do? I will just divide equation a by b right what I will get this will be when I divide this thing that n total n total cancel it out I get 2 y s 2 plus 2 y water plus y h plus y o h divided by 2 y o 2 plus y s 2 o plus y o h. So, this is known if you look at this is known what is that that is basically 6 divided by 2 right which is given. So, this is one expression equation number 5 and another we need to get another equation to find out 5 unknowns no, 6 unknown basically. So, that is y i is equal to y h y h y o h y s 2 o o plus o 2 right. These are the spaces and then I will get 1 and we can look at this uh, you know 6 solve these equations and such so that we can get this you know uh, values. So, what I will tell you that means, let us look at how we can go about this. We know that P is given T initial temperature is given what is that and initial mixture ratio is given right. So, initial temperature must be given because that is the point and then what you will do? You will have to assume value of adiabatic temperature right. And after assuming those adiabatic temperature, then you will have to compute this equilibrium compositions, you know, right P and T by using this give minimization of Gibbs free energy, right. And then estimate that heat of reaction what I am getting, right. So, if you look at whatever this thing I have told like in the previously, like you need to solve 6 equations to get those compositions you know because K p and other things will be known. So, you will get composition then you will have to estimate heat of reactions because you have assumed adiabatic you do not know really adiabatic then estimate the new adiabatic temperature from this heat of reaction which we had done already by invoking the first law of thermodynamics right. And by knowing this you know you will have to find out you have guessed this value you have obtained this value, then what is the error you are getting. For example, I will just assume 2000 Kelvin, then I am getting 2001 or 2100 Kelvin. So, naturally there is a error you know which I cannot tolerate for example, but if you can say look it is only 5 percent error, I need not worry about it, then you can manage it is less than error. Then if it is T adiabatic is equal to T uh, you know adiabatic star or the gas value, then you can stop right. If we are happy with the error whatever it is coming. 
let us say 1 percent, 2 percent, 3 percent you can tolerate, then you can stop. But suppose you are not happy, like if T adiabatic, T adiabatic star is greater than the error, tolerable error, then you will have to find out the what will be the new guess value. That means, this T adiabatic plus alpha minus T adiabatic minus T uh, you know uh, star kind of things. So, uh, uh, right. So, what you will have to do? So, you will have to basically use a relaxation parameter. Generally, people use under relaxation parameter, you know, alpha is less than 1 kind of things. And uh, because if you give a you know over relaxation, sometimes you may get instability problems. So, then if you are not happy with this, then you will have to guess value, this is a new guess value, you will have to go to the step 1. And then you know that is the way it will go on iterating and you will do and then estimate those values. right? So, now let us look at a an example, which we will be dealing in the classroom kind of thing. If C O 2 gas is heated to 3000 Kelvin at a constant pressure of 0 0.2 mega Pascal, we need to determine percentage of C O 2 that can be dissociated into C O and O 2 during this process. So, if you look at the temperature is given and the pressure is given, right? here it is temperature is known unlike the previous case, where you do not know the temperature. right? Therefore, you need to go and do it to find out percent of carbon dioxide. So, carbon dioxide is basically react uh, you know reacting going to the C O plus half O 2. right? And uh, if you look at the what are the coefficient, coefficients for this case C O 2 is 1, C O is also 1, but oxygen is half. These are the stoichiometric of coefficients. You know. So, assuming ideal gas behavior for all component equilibrium constant can be expressed as you know K p y C o C o uh, you know nu C o that is coefficient and y o 2 its corresponding coefficient divided by y C o 2 corresponding coefficient as a stoichiometric coefficient of carbon dioxide p by p naught and these are the coefficients right. And what we let to do? We let us assume that x moles of C O 2 dissociated into C O. Then what will be the reaction? That will be C O 2 will be half uh, you know 1 minus x C O 2 and we are assuming that y C O and there will be some oxygen Z O 2. right? Because the reaction can proceed this way and there can be go that way. right? So, therefore, we need to find out, we are assuming that this will be the product, the C O 2, C O and O 2. Again, this is an uh, you know kind of assumption one has to make. So, we will have to do a C valence. If I look at this is the left hand side is 1 is equal to 1 minus x plus y, right, because uh, there is in the z there is no oxygen here, there is no carbon here. So, y is equal to x. So, O valence we can get 2 that is for the O. 2 into 1 minus x plus y to z. So, z is basically x by 2. right? So, total number of moles will be basically 1 plus x by 2, because this will cancel it out right? 1 plus x by 2. So, if I look at that in a tabular form, you know is a constituent gas is CO 2, CO and O 2 and these are initial moles, these are equilibrium moles what we are you know assuming, because x is not known we need to find out x basically. Then mole fraction you can say 1 minus x divided by this total and similarly for carbon monoxide x divided by 1 plus x by 2 and for oxygen x divided by 2 you know uh, into 1 minus uh, 1 plus x by 2. right? So, what we will do now, we will substitute these values, you know, these values over in the K p that is equilibrium constant, and we must be knowing the you know equilibrium constant from knowing the change in Gibbs free energy at a standard state. So, what we will do? We will basically K p is equal to E minus delta G by T by R u T. So, we know the temperature. So, we will substitute this value 3000 Kelvin, this and these values from the Janov table. If you look at this, I can take from Janov table, right. And then I know these values, right. 
from g i naught because delta g t i know if you express that will be g you know like uh, all those things and then you will get those from the table. So, these values will be known, but whereas k p is y c o and all those things we know and we will substitute this in place of this mole fraction from the table of these values right. I will get and then this is known. So, we need to solve because if you look at this expression is basically if you look at this expression is basically you know in terms of x only right. So, if I will get this x then I can get what will be the equilibrium composition for the spaces being considered like CO, CO2 and oxygen. So, uh, what I will do if we simplify this you will get this 4.948 and then this and then you will have to simplify further and you will get a basically a expression which is cubic in nature. Sometimes very rarely of course, you will get a uh, you know quadratic equation, if it is quadratic you can get easily of course, some of the calculator you are having you can solve cubic equations otherwise you will have to do a iterative method. And keep in mind that here the pressure comes into picture 0 0.2 and this is 0 0.1 you know that you know in this example it is very important this term you cannot really neglect. So, iteratively if you solve this equation you get x is equal to 0 0.8643 that means, the percentage of carbon dioxide you know that uh, that dissociate into C O is basically 86.43 percent and you can get other composition as well. It is a major one in this temperature. If temperature is low, what will happen? Naturally, this percentage will be much lower values, right. If you consider the ambient temperature, it is really would not be nothing will be happening, you know, kind of things, right. So, now this uh, you know we have discussed about chemical equilibrium compositions, right, and now we will move into basically kinetic. So, if you look at this is basically a specialized branch of physical chemistry dealing with study of chemical reactions and their governing factors. So, when you talk about this chemical reaction, it can be homogeneous reaction, it can be heterogeneous reaction. So, when you talk about homogeneization, I have taken an example to CO gas plus reacting with oxygen going to the 2 moles of carbon dioxide. Keep in mind that all are in gaseous phase. But you know uh, in uh, what you call uh, in a propulsive devices we may need to deal with heterogeneous reaction particularly when you are looking at solid propellant combustion right. So, that means where one of this you know reactant or even product you know soot and other things you know happen in combustion is a carbon C s is in solid form it is reacting with carbon dioxide you know is a gaseous and going into the 2 C O. So, this is basically based on the physical state whether it is a you know gaseous phase all the reaction all the components of the participating species in a reaction or one of them is the what you call different physical state like solid or a liquid right then we call it as a heterogeneous reaction, but if all in the same phase we call it as a homogeneous reaction. So, chemical reaction can be you know divided in two categories based on the fastness of reaction one is explosive which is quite very fast as compared to the you know, non explosive reaction and is a slow we call it a deflagration whereas, explosive reaction we call it a detonation kind of thing we will be discussing little later on. And then chemical reaction depends on if you look at on the species concentration temperature and pressure right. We have seen already from the equilibrium point of view, but the reaction rate when you talk about it will be uh, you know we will see little later on that it will depend on that. So, if you look at reaction rate it is basically rate of decrease of reactant concentration or rate of increase of product of concentration generally it is expressed in terms of mole per meter cube second but in some cases we will be looking at k z per meter cube second you know how much mass it is being consumed per unit volume kind of things. So, if I look at a compact expression of chemical reactions 
which you can look at like you know V i dash m i going to the product of V i double dash m i. Keep in mind that this is a summation, which is a various basis. i is can be 1 to n. Similarly, on the reactant side, i is equal to 1 to n real number and V i, V i dash double dash are stoichiometric coefficients of reactants and product. Of course, um, m is the arbitrary specification for all chemical species we are considering, but I will take an example and show you what is it. It looks to be little quite complex, but in uh, you know it is quite simple and it is being used when you are basically using a, a coding kind of thing. Suppose, you are doing a modeling, it is very useful but in our uh, case it may not be that useful, but when you want to model the chemical reaction using uh, basically numerical tools, this is a very very handy way of expressing you know chemical reactions. So, let us take an example that if I take uh, you know 3 H plus hydrogen uh, going to the hydrogen and H you know H, then in this case what is the N? N is the number of species what is that n? n is equal to basically 2, because one is hydrogen, other is H. So, and similarly, if I take H plus O 2 going to the H O 2, in this case n is equal to 3, right, because one is oxygen, other is hydrogen, other is H O 2. Keep in mind that this reaction, what I am considering is elementary in nature. So, if I want to write down this in a compact form, what it would be? M 1 is H, M 2 is H 2, right. If I look at this is my uh, this thing i is equal to 1 to n i dash m i you know i double dash m i right i is equal to 1 to n. So, if I look at what is this v i 1 in this case it is what you call 3, because h is there. What about v 2 dash? v 2 dash will be 0, because there is no a you know S 2 over here. If I look at M 2 is S 2 and the left hand side is not there. So, therefore, this will be 0 right. And similarly, if you look at in the right hand side that is H, if you look at it is V 1 dash is equal to 1, whereas in the what you call for the hydrogen in the right hand side V 2 dash is equal to 1, because hydrogen is there. And similarly, I will you know you can think of about this, this is a similar way like in the left hand side if I consider the hydrogen you know V 1 dash is equal to 1 for the product what will be V 1 double dash is equal to 0. Similarly, oxygen you know oh, there is a mistake actually. Uh, so, this will be 1 right and V 2 dash will be 0 and M 3 is basically H O 2 and V 3 is equal to 0, there is nothing on the left hand side, right hand side is equal to 1. So, the above reactions are elementary as I have told you. So, global reactions will be like you know 2 moles of hydrogen reacting with oxygen going to the product of 2 moles of water. And if you look at what is really happening, this is one you know hydrogen and another hydrogen and oxygen you know they will come and collide with each other, so that the bonds are broken. And if you look at there is a one bond which is having you know formed that is a water. That means, how many bonds? This is the 1, 2, 3 you know 3 bonds are being broken, 4 bonds are being formed you know like kind of thing. So, it is quite no sorry uh, this is I mean if you look at this is a quite difficult uh, things to happen right. So, the 3 bonds are to be broken and 4 bonds are to be formed, because you know which is unlikely to occur right. So, therefore, it is you know global reactions you know is very unlikely to occur I think I think it will be clear when I will be talking about this uh, what you call uh, collision theory. So, similarly we can see that in uh, 1 mole of methane reacting with 2 moles of oxygen going to the carbon dioxide and water. If you look at this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 bonds are there you know and similarly oxygen 1, 2 you know like at 6 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, if you look at this is a 
quite a difficult to happen in real situation, because too many bonds have to be broken, too many forms and these should come together, so that it will be having effect. So, therefore, global reaction is really would not be possible in uh, real situations. Uh, if you note that just now I have invoked the concept of breaking of bond and the forming of bond explaining a global reaction for both methane and air and hydrogen air. But this is just to explain you the thing, you must keep in mind that such kind of breaking of bond and uh, forming of new bonds are not really being taking place uh, in the global kinetics. In other words, these breaking of bond or the forming of new bonds are uh, likely to occur in the elementary reaction only. Just to explain, I have invoked this concept, but you must keep in mind that uh, this is wrong to say that this process of breaking a bond and forming a bonds are occurring for global reactions. So, but whereas what is likely to occur is the bimolecular and trimolecular reactions may occur. So, let us consider reaction between two molecules that is A you know moles of species A reacting with B moles of species B going to the product C moles of species C and D moles of species D. So, I can write down this reaction rate is basically 1 over A d c a by d t right. And this is the minus sign, because it is getting consumed and similarly equal to the d c v by d t 1 over b minus sign, because b uh, you know reactant is getting consumed is equal to 1 over c d c by d t uh, and 1 over d d c by d t. So, if you look at what is saying, it is saying you know like uh, that reaction rate for each space is one in case it is getting consumed, other case is by getting produced. For example, if I take H plus uh, reacting with O is going to the O H and I can write down in similar way like you know uh, D C H by uh, what you call by D, uh, I can write down this is D C H by d t minus is equal to d c o by d t minus is equal to d c o h by d t. Keep in mind that this reaction rate when you talk about in this example d c h by d t is proportional to what concentration of hydrogen and oxygen. When you talk about this concentration of hydrogen and oxygen, then you know it has to be constant. So, that constant we call it as a basically rate of you know reaction kind of thing. So, if I sum it of this discussion, then we need to invoke the law of mass action, because how this I, I could write. Then rot, the law of mass action states that the rate of reaction of a chemical species is proportional to the product of concentration of participating chemical species where each concentration is raised to the power equal to the corresponding stoichiometric coefficient of chemical reaction. So, this is a very important statement right, which governs the reaction rate and other thing. So, for example, if I say that you know in a very compact form reaction rate of I s species you know will be proportional to the product of all the species which will be participating on the you know you can consider as a reactant site and corresponding to their stoichiometric coefficient. So, I can write down this is a proportional. So, therefore, k r r i is equal to k summation of c m i v i and k as I told it is a specific reaction rate or the rate coefficient right. So, this we need to determine right how to determine that is a very important aspect. So, K depends on the temperature and it will be dependent on activation energy. Of course, it does not depend on the concentration, because the you know is already according to mass law of mass action that it is basically a proportionality constant already concentration are there. Keep in mind that this law of mass action holds could only for the elementary reaction, it cannot be 
hold good for the global reaction what we will be using you know that is a very important statement you must keep in mind. So, question is how to determine the value of k right that is a very important aspect. So, we need to look at collision theory right what is the collision theory collision theory is basis you know the molecules will be uh, moving randomly and it will be colliding with each other and when there is a colliding with each other it will be having you know uh, collide in a proper orientation that is the first important thing and then it should have enough energy to do what to break the bunch. So, that is basically one has to look at it as I told you what happens during chemical reaction I must repeat that it is basically existing bonds are broken and new bonds are formed and that is the way of life you know like new old things goes out and new things come in then only life will be there otherwise no right. So, similarly for that you need to have enough energy right because the molecules you know are colliding with each other in a random motion. So, therefore, you know whenever there is a problem you know it will be something new things would come out of it when there is a collision and it should have uh, enough energy kind of things. So, but what is the condition of dissociation of bonds because the bond is broken if it is a broken then it must have enough energy and when you talk about this enough energy you know and also this as to molecule has to be collided in a proper dire orientation right then it should go to a very higher level and then of course, it comes as this is uh, what you call uh, as I told colliding molecule must have for just higher energy than the mean energy level otherwise it would not really make any impact. So, what will happen during this reaction? So, what will happen this is having a reactant it will be colliding it will go to the activated complex kind of a higher energy level and then it will be drop out and it will get to the product keep in mind that this diagram I have told shown here is meant for a exothermic reaction because if you look at the product is you know energy level is lower than the reactant and this difference of course, what we call is the heat of reaction. So, the what is the probability you know of this collision being taken place or rather a successful collision being taken place that will be depend on the you know Boltzmann energy distribution we state that probability of a molecule possessing a threshold energy E what do we call it as the activation energy is proportional to exponential E by R u t right. So, condition for chemical reaction to occur what I have already told I want to repeat that suitable molecule must collide with each other and the molecule must collide with proper orientation that is determined by a steric factor and colliding molecule must possess enough energy greater than the threshold value that we call it as a activation energy right. So, from the collision theory we can find out that our reaction rate is basically z a b a c is your steric factor and probability is basically e power to the minus capital E r u t and this is capital E is basically activation energy and this is of course, Boltzmann energy probability factor and steric factor and collision frequency what is the you know frequency with which collision will be taking place. <coughs> so, from kinetic theory of gases one can get z a b is basically c a c v sigma a b square keep in mind that in the collision uh, kinetic theory of gases you consider as a sphere right and this sigma a is basically average diameter which will be going and this diameter will be uh, you know diameter of the each molecules right. And if you remember that 8 k uh, 8 pi k b, k b is basically Boltzmann constant right and uh, T divided by mu, mu is the reduced mass that is m a m b divided by m a and v a b. This is the collision theory I am not getting into detail maybe you can refer some books to get that and this is the square root of that velocity. So, and if you look at the reaction rate comes as C a C b and sigma square a b is basically 8 pi k b by t by mu 
S I mean if I club all those things, because I will put it over here and I will get these values. So, and if I club all those things, you know these uh, values together, right, and keeping this temperature out, you know this portion of this I can write down as B T power to the 0 0.5 C A C B E power to the E by R U T. So, then K if I look at K is basically B T power to the 0 0.5 E minus E by R U T. So, if you look at A is basically is known as pre exponential exponential factor factor and which is basically A is equal to B power to T. So, this you know you can put it as a your uh, law of mass action or reaction rate you can get. So, if you look at if I plot this L n k with respect to the 1 over t, I will get a slope values right and which is uh, from this if I conduct experiments you know find out this k and other thing I can get what is the act you know like a activation energy from this slope and getting these values whenever it will be 0 you know like when the temperature is very very uh, you know very high and it will go you will get a value here that is your p exponential factor you know you can get that one so the form of equation previous section we can write down you know like uh, is known as arrhenius law right but there is a limitation of this arrhenius it cannot simulate the combustion process over a wide range of temperature that is the limitation and rate law matches experimental data at high temperature of course it may not match at the low temperature for example you know this portion it may not match but however it is matching in this portion you know because this is this curve corresponding to low temperature so therefore one has to you know take care of that and keep in mind that variation reaction with temperature is quite really you know interesting because if I go on increasing you will see this reaction rate goes up of course, it goes down because the spaces would not be there to be reacted. And uh, keep in mind that this is goes by exponential. So, therefore, an increase in temperature by 10 percent for the same activation energy can cause the reaction rate to be enhanced by 250 percent right. So, this is a very important aspect and one has to worry about this kinetics part and uh, I will stop over here and then we will see in the next lecture about the other aspect of this uh, you know multi step chemistry and then look at it. Okay.